For years, Yogscast was a juggernaut in the Minecraft sphere of online entertainment, spawning many a fond memory from Shadow of Israfel to Jaffa Factory. These series solidifying millions of adoring fans. But today at Yogscast, fans are asking, what happened? The Yogs crew has always been known for their witty British personalities drawing in millions of viewers. However, after suddenly abandoning the game that brought them their initial success, the community has become split. On top of that, a failed crowdfunding project and intercompany scandals resulting in members leaving under difficult circumstances. To some OG fans, Yogscast may seem like a shadow of its former self. But is Yang's cast simply evolving to meet current tastes? Or are they truly falling off the cliff of relevancy? Though to answer these questions, we need to start at the top of where this wild ride all began. In a little game called Minecraft. On May 17th, 2009, Minecraft was born. The golden child of one Marcus Notch, the sandbox game was forever going to change not only the online world of video games, but the way we consume entertainment here on YouTube. Yogscast helping to pioneer this new trend. But you see, it was really back in 2008 when two friends, Lewis and Simon, decided to combine their creative energies into one channel extravaganza, Blue Zephos. But frankly, not that catchy of a name. He eventually decided upon a name change which originated from the World of Warcraft killed Ye Old Goon Squad, or Yogs. There you have it folks, Yogs cast was born and the rest is history. But it wasn't until 2010 when the up and coming superpower Minecraft and these young chaps aspirations clashed for the very first time. And what would follow was one hell of a ride. I have three words for you. Shadow of Israfel. A series that truly lit the fire under this channel's arse. But you see, I didn't really realize the significance of this series until I started doing research for my video with a little third-party tool called TubeBuddy. It helped me not only discover how important this series was to the community, but also how popular it has been since. And if you're someone that also makes videos and you want to know more about what your audience is interested in and how to get more views, I have a free link for TubeBuddy down in my description below. However, as important as Shadows of Israfel was to their initial success, it was also one of their most controversial series with fans. After many a fan religiously tuning in to catch up on the latest adventure, one day this series suddenly vanished. As one commenter noted, they had built worlds, crafted stories, and got everyone together for a grand adventure. An adventure though, that would never get a solid conclusion. Though before this unfinished ending, their success spawned many other explorations into the Minecraft universe. Practically pioneering Minecraft scripted series. And with this success came the subsequent expansion of their cast and crew. And this history is important. I think it's safe to say that in many respects, Yogg's cast was far ahead of their time. However, looking at their channel today, you don't see much crafting going on. Could this change in content direction have ultimately contributed to their supposed decline? Some fans saying, all the things that made them popular have taken a backseat to cookie cutter mass manufactured content. To really understand the shift away from Minecraft content, we need to look at the popularity of the game as a whole. In a video by Mr. Epic that I'll link down below, Minecraft has had a bit of a roller coaster ride of its own. Initially, starting pretty slowly back in 2009, it rose to become one of the most played online games by 2013. A game that had infinite possibilities and endless draw. Or so they thought. Everyone knows what goes up must eventually come down. 2018, this Minecraft car had dropped down to a low point. However, like any good ride, eventually it rose back up to the top by 2019 and honestly has since stayed pretty consistent. 
And although Yogscast rode this Minecraft car to the top, when the game started to descend, Yogscast jumped off this roller coaster, abandoning series like Shadow of Israfel in the Lost and Found area. This has forever been a sore spot for OG fans, as they never permanently ended the series, but they were clear that they were pretty tired of it. And now you could argue that maybe it was their own creativity that was suffering from having to jam out the same content over and over again. You could even argue that it was them trying to chase the all-powerful algorithm that ultimately resulted in this shift. Or perhaps, like many have said, they began to focus on attracting a younger demographic. Whatever the case, it's clear that at this point it was the beginning of the end of this Yogscast era. Regardless, I think we can all agree that diversification in content, especially as you grow, is necessary. But let's examine what happened. As you may know from a previous video, I am a fan of baked goods. Mmm, daddy likey. So let's head over to our local mom and pop bakery for a little analogy. Within a relatively short stay here on YouTube, these two friends had developed quite a successful startup. And you see, at this time in Yogscast history, they were kind of like one big bakery shop. And as time went on, the more they wanted to expand into other pastries. So let's say you're a small video game channel and you want to reach more fans, but you also want to make some money. Your product is videos, or in this analogy, muffins. But being a mom and pop bakery shop, it's hard to sell your baked goods. You don't have any marketing, distribution, or buyers really. And early on on YouTube, it was the very same situation for those creators. There was no real easy way to make revenue from your videos. There was no easy way to sell muffins. So what do you do? Well, you work with a more established bakery shop here on Main Street. This bigger bakery hopefully will help you promote and sell more baked goods. And in turn gives you a cut of the sales. And you may be wondering, why did Yogscast start their own bakery? Well, you see, that's because originally they were part of a larger corporation called Maker Studios. And you see, Yogscast didn't feel like they were being given a fair cut of their muffin sales. So they decided to take what was left of their muffin and skedaddle. This bad bakery experience not only inspired Yogscast to start their own bakery shop, but to also help others who wanted to sell their various cupcakes. A bakery where they gave those creators a better deal. Today, their MCN helps promote around 50 other creators and takes a cut for their efforts. Possibly their greatest achievement wasn't their MCN. A lot of their good fortune was actually given back to the community. The Yogs crew equally becoming as famous for their yearly Yogs Jingle Jam, which has raised upwards of $17.7 million for respected charities as of January 2020. And as we continue to move further down this Yogs cast timeline, we see that their revenue sources became much more lucrative. And with many gamers shifting their attention more to Twitch, YouTube may honestly just be less of a major business priority for Yogscast. Regardless, community was everything to them. But not every business decision they made was a raving success. In fact, some of their more aspirational endeavors ended up in utter failure. By the early 2010s, Yogscast was a mainstream staple in many a viewers' daily entertainment consumption, becoming the UK's first channel to reach 1 billion views. There were no flash in the pan, and it was with their past success that led them to wanting to spread their wings into other facets of creativity. Perhaps game development. Though in time, a decision that they may soon come to regret. Now, if you're a fan, you may remember the game you've always wanted, Yag Ventures. It was originally a quarter million dollar fundraising opportunity for an open world sandbox title emphasizing adventure and player control. Not really unlike the kinds of games Yogg's cast had become famous for playing. With the initial release of this crowdfunding project, fans were ecstatic, quickly raising over $500,000 from nearly 14,000 backers. Fans were so passionate they just readily threw, threw their money into the bin. And by 2013, a closed beta of the game was released to those who had donated. But you see, that's when the unexpected happened. The developer and Yang's cast team suddenly 
went silent. So what happened? Well, at the time of development, there were two major red flags. One being simply that many of the people had never heard of the game studio that was supposedly developing this game. Wintercool. The Kickstarter page revealed very little about this gaming studio. However, it did promise that longtime veterans of film and game companies working at the highest levels of production were creating the game. Okay, veterans, we can trust them, right? Well, the page provided no actual details about where Wintercool employees actually worked prior to starting at this game studio, nor which game or film projects any of them had done previously. And $250,000 seems kind of like a big ask for people that aren't backing any of these claims up with some sort of resume. Regardless, what the Kickstarter made abundantly clear was that this was Wintercool's first game. This raised the second red flag. Yag Ventures was extremely ambitious, perhaps too ambitious for your first game. So ultimately, when the project went no further, how did fans react? With nearly 14,000 donations and half a million dollars raised, fans didn't get what they paid for. What they got instead was an email. You've got mail. The email sent to Kickstarter backers basically stating, so uh, you know, that Yog Ventures thing, mm, it's not gonna happen. But hey, look, here's some Steam keys to another sandbox game. Tug. Okay, I guess that's fine, but what if I already own Tug or I, I just don't want Tug at all? Oh, well, you're screwed. Around the community, everyone was doing the upside down smiley face. In the Fallout, Yogg's cast was quick to distance themselves from the gaming developer. But make no mistake, both Wintercool and Yogg's cast are to blame for this situation. They clearly misled fans with the initial Kickstarter pitch and made unrealistic promises that they never delivered on. Despite all of their past success, this team was simply not ready for this endeavor. And perhaps the community may have been more all right with the outcome had they been more upfront in the first place. And to be fair, this isn't the first Kickstarter to be fully funded and then fall through. In fact, it isn't even the first in the gaming space. And with Kickstarter itself refusing to step up and take any action against those who default on their promises, this left backers without their money or the game that they had invested in. And for some fans, this is where more seeds of doubt were planted in their trust for Yogg's cast. Though I would like to think that Yogg's cast quickly learned from this situation and in the years following has released several fairly successful games of their own. Even with this slight tarnish to their reputation, Yogg's cast was not down for the count. After all, it wasn't the games that brought in the crowds. It was the personalities. But for one personality in particular, everything was about to turn upside down. For channels like Yogg's Cast, what really caught viewers' attention were the personalities behind the series. Lewis and Simon were the creative brain children of many of their successful endeavors. Their passion was only amplified by other cast and characters such as Sips and Duncan, who added to their collective chemistry. But by 2015, things for the man of a thousand voices, his mentality began to change. It was revealed in an update that for unknown medical reasons, Simon had been in and out of the hospital for upwards of four weeks. After being successfully discharged, over the next few years, Simon would go through a string of hiatuses, slowly sinking into the background, appearing in less and less daily Yogscast content. This too had an effect on fans, those who had gotten used to seeing Simon on the daily, and who to some was the main driving force in this dynamic duo. But let's look at this from another perspective. Simon, for a good six to seven years, had been coming into the office day in, day out, delivering you daily content. And to someone that uploads weekly, I can tell you that it takes a certain level of mental and physical fortitude just to keep up that pace. Let alone the fact that Simon wasn't just responsible for creating videos, but also helping run this multifaceted business. Now, I'm sure you've heard at least one of your favorite influencers discuss this idea around creator burnout. 
And I have to admit, I respect and admire the fact that Simon knew when it was time to take a step back. So that now when he returns, he can focus his full energy on delivering you a quality product. And for his sake, mentally stay sane. Though this little hill wasn't what caused Yogg's cast particular trouble. Fast forward a few years and Scandal would be knocking right at their doorstep. In a time before Rooster Teeth was airing out its dirty laundry, it was here at Yogg's Cast where they too were about to come under fire. Insert here Yogg's Cast creator Kath. A fairly well known member of the Yogg's Cast family, one day Kath got a little more attention than he bargained for being accused of sending inappropriate messages to members of the community. Following this revelation, Lewis decided to take action, calling an independent HR firm to investigate this and other accusations. I say other because he wasn't alone. These numerous allegations centering around one Yogscast CEO, Terps, as well as historic claims against Paul Sykes. This situation resulting in Terps quickly announcing his resignation, admitting to inappropriately sliding into the DMs of fans, Kaff also being terminated, and Paul also taking a step down. Three scandals, one summer in 2019, a company shaken and a community crushed. Is anyone else getting Rooster Teeth vibes right now? If you want to know more about that situation, see my video up above. However reprehensible the situation, what really has me wondering is how do these situations happen? With other group channels seemingly falling into the same pitfalls, tarnishing the company that they worked for, whether they had anything to do with it or not, how does the fan personality relationship affect how these situations manifest? Personally, I believe where there is power and influence, there's always a chance that somebody, whether knowingly or not, will abuse this power and influence. And while it may seem like innocent connection in the minds of these instigators, it is only ever led to backlash. And for those accusing these personalities of such behavior, do they deserve some blame as well? That's a thought I want to leave to you. But the question you're all wondering is where does this leave Yogg's cast? So let's head over to the Yogg's Cast high scores and tally up the score. And over here, the barely legible board of shame, we have tallied up four major arguments for the supposed decline of Yogg's Cast. The first coming from fans citing the abandonment of their beloved Minecraft series, some of them being left on nail biting cliffhangers. And while it's fair to say that evolution in content is necessary, this has still left a sore spot for many viewers. Though it was during their rise to glory that they decided to jump on a new creative path, game development. Sadly though, shafting fans on a failed Kickstarter wasn't exactly a winning business plan. In fact, it only planted more seeds of doubt in fans' trust for Yogg's cast. And as time went on, some members of the crew began to feel the heat from the constant YouTube grind. Founding member Simon famously taking leave on several hiatuses throughout the latter years of the channel. Though all of these other arguments pale in comparison to the recent scandals that left CEO and other key members being axed for inappropriate behavior with those in the community. And as the famous saying goes, four strikes and you're... God, I still don't, I still don't understand baseball analogies. Whatever. With all of these events, it has some in the community wondering, how many more strikes do we need before we nail this coffin shut? While this company has surely endured the brunt of several bad situations, what does the future hold for Yogg's cast? It's easy to nitpick at all the bad things that they have gone through and ignore the good. This is a channel, after all, that has not only survived many YouTube algorithmic changes, but has spread its wings into multiple revenue streams. A family of over 50 creators. While I personally feel that they are far from fallen, Will they ever ride this car once again to the top of this online roller coaster? Or will they continue to do loop after loop, never to return to the heights of their former glory? I want to know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Remember, I'm Ryan, and I'll see you in the next video.